What's up guys, Joe here, welcome back to my channel and today we are back with more Uno X and I've started on the transfer screen, cannot wait to have this team at my disposal in 2022 but first we do have some big objectives to try and conquer today. So looking at the calendar we do have the Danish tour, the Czech tour and the Deutschland tour all in today's episode. Now I'm not sure I'll play all of these races but firstly uh, the Tour of Denmark essentially is a massive objective for us this season. So just looking here at our top five objectives we've achieved most of them. We I think failed the top five on loop just even though that was a very difficult objective of course but uh, a stage win at the Danish Tour is our first big goal of the episodes. And looking at the parkours we do have five stages, some flat ones for sure so a very sprinter friendly all we have on the cards here and a time trial to finish. Arriving at stage one then and our team for the race we do have a very Danish oriented team uh, we had the same for the Arctic race of Norway in the previous episode so we do have quite a few Danes coming here. Captain Price of course he will try and win that final time trial. We have Johansson, Hulgaard and Larsen as well repping for Denmark. Away we go then and looking at the start list here in Denmark I think we have some fairly good riders starting with Julian Philippe, the world champion, Mark Cavendish as well. So just in one team, we have two absurdly good riders. You can see the full list here. So even with Christopher Halvorsen, winning a sprint here is going to be so, so tough. Here we go then, guys. 5k to go is approaching. We are right to the front. It's Jimmy Johansson doing the job for us. Let's up the man to 95, perhaps. We have Nicholas Larsen, Werenschgold, and Hal Vorsen in our train today. And hopefully, our strong train can deliver us the win over the likes of Mark Cavendish, of course, the new British champion. Um, anyway, I think we have Mads Pedersen, obviously a local hero here in Denmark. He is on the wheel. Askren, Honoré as well. Two more local riders really riding their home tour. But anyway, 1.8k. Let's go with Werenge Gold. Halvorsen is ready. Here comes Giacomo Nizzolo. I'm going to launch early. I've launched too early as well with Chris Halvorsen. It's not going to be the win. I saw Cav hunting, but it will be Garcia Cortina getting the win today, we will end up outside the top five in a disappointing first stage, it has to be said. Simply not quick enough here today. In fact, it wasn't that. It was simply a bad mistake by me going too early. But Ivan Garcia Cortina, a surprise winner for sure. However, I think the downhill finish today after a long stay should hopefully suit our team if we can deliver a better lead out today. And oh man, look at this. Every single rider in our team is on a great day bar Chris Halvorsen, who is targeting this race. He's expected to have great form right here. So that is a massive, massive shame for us for sure. Look at this, guys. Ivan Garcia Cortina is in the leader's jersey. And look how similar it is to the Movistar jersey. You can hardly tell he's the leader of the race. It is so similar. Oh, and we have just had a crash out. Actually, Wrestle goes down and so does Jasper Stuyven for Trek Segafredo. That is a massive, massive moment in this race because uh, he could have been a real GC contender for sure. Anyway, I've tried to make a slightly bigger train today with five riders. Captain Price with a massive day, 78 time trial. He is sat on the front for us up to maybe 90 with him and he is going to keep us right in position and hopefully having more riders to the front should definitely help us try and get that win. Anyway, we do need to think about that downhill so let's go up to 95 99 with captain price actually and try and really hammer it now absolutely beautiful job by captain price now we're hansen up to 99 really trying to keep the numbers late in the stage so how and hopefully can sprint much closer to the finish line we ran out of numbers in the previous stage so hopefully it will pay dividends this tactic but the corners aren't really going to help us here. We have 2k to go. Let's sprint with Larson. Let's sprint with Werenge Gold. We have too many corners now, surely, into the final kilometer. We have four riders potentially going for this victory. Can any of our riders get it? Is it going to be Johansson on home soil? It is a lead out victory. Julius Johansson gets the win. It's a 1-2-3 for Uno X today and that I guess is what you get for having a massively strong lead out train. We had finished with all of those corners on that descent but we cannot complain at all. Julius Johansson is a winner at his home tour and apparently this one is a sprint stage however an uphill finish could maybe put Cav in some difficulties so we'll try and really push the rhythm up there. 
So I think this is a preview of the finish in about 20k's time and that uphill really is going to have a massive impact. So I think maybe even attacking rather than trying to sprint could be our best option as sadly the gorilla has fallen. Okay, so 5k to go. I have followed Cavendish with Halvorsen and Johansson trying to move his way up in this group. And we are coming to this climb. Captain Price, come on, help me out. Let's go up to 95. Johansson, try and get on your teammate's wheel right here. These guys can sit up. Captain Price up to 99. Here we go. There goes right. There goes Philippe. Cav, Halvorsen on his wheel. Let's try and maybe attack. This was the moment I wanted to be at the front. Look at this block. Oh my word, it's a horrible block. Horrible block today. And Alaphilippe has gone and won this stage. Oh my word. I was trying to line up an attack, but Alaphilippe attacks on that climb himself after we get blocked. Cav is going to steal second as well. Halvorsen only third. Oh, I was trying to wind up my own attack. And in the end, we have been to Koenig today. I guess the only good point is that there weren't any major time gaps in the end, which does mean the GC remains intact and Johansson is still right there, very, very close to first place. Another sprint stage today. It's time for Hal Vorsen to take it to Cav and Nizzolo and Garcia Cortina. So I do hope that Captain Price hasn't peaked too early for his big day in the time trials tomorrow. But saying that, Johansson could be our GC leader with that slight advantage he has already on his teammate, a good time trialist as well. Nonetheless, Hal Vorsen, a plus one, it will do. We've just missed it. A bad moment for the team because Wrestle has fallen and actually abandoned the race. And that is a real shame. You never want to see that from any rider. Yepa Askov is a rider I wanted to actually try and sign this year, but his contract is running until a future season. I've watched him in real life a little. He's a very well-rounded rider who can sprint as well. So we'll be keeping an eye on him in this series. Nonetheless, 7K to go. We need to definitely keep our eye to the front of the race right now. So Hulgaard has done a good job, but hopefully Captain Price can do a much better job with his massive flat again today. Look at Captain Price. Garcia Cortina knows the wheel he should be trying to follow right here. I'm not quite sure if there are any corners. Seems there are a few, but seems pretty straight to the line. I can see the Flamme Rouge up ahead right here. Let's try and hold off with Captain Price. Sprint now with Johansson. Larson maybe into the final 1.5k. Hal Vorsen trying his best not to get blocks. And he, that's exactly what's happened. That is exactly what has happened. I'm afraid Larson is our best shout today, but it will be Mark Cavendish, the Manx missile, finally winning a stage. We get third with Larson, but Hal Vorsen didn't get the opportunity. So frustrating. So it just wasn't Hal Vorsen's race. Of course, one more stage is left, but uh, he hasn't quite had the opportunity and found his chance to win a stage. But going into that final time trial, it is Mark Cavendish holding the lead? I doubt he's going to hold on, though. Looking at our rivals... Garcia Cortina, he can TT a little bit, but Alaphilippe looks pretty good. Um, I'm not quite sure who else can TT really well. This will decide the overall then, and it looks like Kasper Askren probably could overhaul the entire time bonuses, uh, the 30 seconds to Cavendish today, but Alaphilippe may be the best place to win the Danish Tour. So Morten Hulgaard enters the final column, so let's press him all the way up to 99, try and sprint for the finish. Can he take the best time? He is in the top 10. And by the way, it's not the day we hoped for with Captain Price. The plus one. He peaks one day too early. I knew it would happen. Um, while Soren Werenschgold with an absolutely shocking day, it would seem. So, Captain Price into the final kilometer. He sprints for the line. Is it going to be anything good? It's the top 10. But sadly, definitely not what we were hoping and dreaming for. Although I think anything we did dream about would have been put to bed by this man right Right here is he going to take the best time just about he is beatable only two seconds ahead of Luke Durbridge however we have great news from the start line Garcia Cortina is on that start line waiting to go but Johansson 12 seconds down in the GC is on a great day plus three day could we maybe challenge for a place on the podium I think the win Maybe just out of reach. Larson as well, by the way. 12 seconds down. He's on a great day as well. Can one of these riders get on the final podium? Like I said, the win may be a step too far, but um, I'm aiming for that podium place. So Larson through the first split is nine seconds down. He is in the top 10 as well. Alaphilippe is five seconds down. That is the aim for Jimmy Johansson. Let's press it just up to 88. Try and maybe scare him at this first split. 12 seconds down, so he is slower than Larson and Alaphilippe, but it is close. 
And look at this, we have some team tactics coming into play. Halvorsen waiting for Larsen, giving him a bit of a draft into that final kilometre. Halvorsen doing his best, of course. It doesn't really have any effect, but here goes Larsen all the way to the line. Where does he go? It's a top 10 place, 18 seconds down. Here comes Alaphilippe. Can he beat Nicholas Larsen? I think he is going to. Alaphilippe goes 12 seconds down. And I think he is going to win this race overall, perhaps. Or is it going to be Askreen? It's going to be close in the end. Here comes Jimmy Johansson to the line. Not quite good enough. 22 seconds down today. And I think that will be all she wrote. Kasper Askren with the results he came here for and he will win the overall race as well. We just miss out on a place on the podium, fourth and sixth overall, but we do achieve our objective of that stage win and a pretty solid race in the GC. Look at us mixing it up with those big world saw teams. So we cannot complain one bit with how this race has gone. We missed out on the sprint jersey as well, but um, yeah. Pretty decent race here in Denmark. Sadly, Russell has broken his collarbone, which of course, not as ill, but not the worst injury you can get as a cyclist. So I have actually played the check tour off camera. It wasn't an objective, and we do want to swiftly get through to the end of the season. Now, as you can see, the race was won by Nielsen Paulus. I will have some highlights on camera right now. By the way, we didn't manage to get a stage win. Now, Soren Rangsgold, I think, only has one victory this year, um, and that was at the Tour of Estonia, where he won the GC as well but um we came very close in a couple of sprints with him unable to get that victory and you can also see Paulus he won the queen stage of the race solo giving him the overall GC victory so we have done well this episode to get most of the way through August we're now at the Deutschland tour which is an objective as you can see more on that in a moment but four stages I always enjoy playing this race to be fair we have a flat one to start, but a lot of hills on the rest of the stages, even though that stage four is officially a flat one. So this should be a fun race. And we've done very well with our objectives as of late, getting our last five in a row. And this is the final one of the season. Our sponsors are confidence very high already. It's maxed out completely, but we are looking for a stage win in Germany. And the team that are going to try and do that are led by Rasmus Tiller and Marcus Cooler guards, but we will have some very good sprinters here, I am sure. And Bora Hansgrower, I can see already Ackerman and Schackman, they have got their A team. Away we go here in Germany then, and that is of course regarding Bora uh, because they are at their home race. Bahrain victorious, Movistar with very good teams as well. You can see the full start list on screen right now. I think this Felix Gross is joining UAE in real life, interested to see what he can do there. But let's try and join the breakaway on this opening stage, and I think Eva Scarset is going to be our man. I remember earlier this season looking at a terrible KOM. Guys, this has to be the worst KOM on PCM. Look at this climb. We have 2k to go to it. Let's try and win it with Eva Scarset. Here we go then. 1k to go. Oh, this is ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. We're going to have to go all out attack here. 800 meters to go. Try and beat our rivals to the top right now and I think we are going to win the worst KOM in PCM. That is for sure. Six points. So I think we may as well try and secure this jersey right now with Scar set. We have 600 metres to go until the next KOM. Full out attack. I think we have enough to go. And there you are. We will be wearing the KOM jersey for stage two. And so Scarset was the final rider to be caught from the breakaway. Now it is his brother on the front of the group for us. Let's put him to even... 99 with 5k to go. I think it's completely flat to the line. Yes, it is. We do have uh, Sport Volanderen to our left. GVA is here as well. Also moving up in the final is Brian Kokar, but we need to go 99 right now as Scarset is done. He can pull over for the day. We have 2k to go. Let's sprint with Westlet. We have Rasmus Tiller as well into this final kilometer. Marcus Ullegaard is sprinting for us today. He's running very low on red. Here he goes for the line. Does he have enough? to take victory you know he does we get our sponsor objective in comfortable fashion as well here on stage one beautiful lead out right there there we go what a start to this race Marcus Ulgar could definitely try and target the overall GC and I think that's definitely what we're going to have to try and do after that victory and remember we also have the KOM jersey with Eva Scarset and a hilly long stage today, 215 kilometers. This is kind of like a semi-classic and we need to be on top form because Shackman, Formolo, Comrade Trenton, they're all gonna be very dangerous in the GC. 
And so Jonas Widerberg is going to be the man controlling all day for us. Ivis Garza he is going to have to do his job for the team today. Sat in the pelts on protecting our leader Marcus Hulagard. And the breakaway do have a sizable lead but all the action is to unfold later on in the stage. And so we've lost quite a couple of riders. We only have four riders really left in the race. Widerberg, Scarza, Anderson, they are gone. But we are really trying to make this difficult on the climbs. Down to 97 riders, 74 riders now in the group. And hopefully we'll see so many good riders or at least so many riders struggling as the stage continues so four becomes two now as Tiller is the only helper really left for Marcus Hulgaard and look at the rhythm being set by Van Hestel we have Comrade Shackman, Shampusan, Kemner to the front as well and that group have gone so we do need to tempo with Tiller to make sure we bring those guys in and we do down to 44 at the front but now we are prone to being attacked with Jefferson Cepeda not a rider you'd really associate with this race he is now attacking us to be fair to him Bookman now setting a hard rhythm as well for Bora Hansgrohe and like I said 44 at the front. None of these riders are coming back in. We have one final hill to conquer. So I thought about going for this intermediate sprint. However, we still have Koka and a few other sprinters who seem very interested here. So I'm not actually going to bother with that on this occasion. Here we go then. Here we go. Greg Van Avermaet, Davide Formolo and Damiano Caruso all on the attack. Rasmus Tiller is going to be done very swiftly right here. And it's going to be Hall of Guard on his own to defend this leader's jersey. I really do enjoy this Deutschland tour. Always an explosive, exciting race right now. Let's use our gel. Shackman is here. Tesfastion is here as well. There goes Tiller. He is completely done. We're going to have a very select day here at the front of this race. Coming up to 95. Chanetsky is trying a move. Let's make sure we're following. And we have covered off every single move on the day. Chanetsky can't get away. Jorgensen is trying. Let's jump in the American's wheel. And can we slip away right now? with Matteo Jorgensen. I will work with man. We have 6k to go, but we are reeled in. I think we have 27 left at the front. Let's just try and get in the wheels and go to the line. And here we go. Downhill to the finish from this point. We have 28 riders at the front of the race. Hulagard is in the wheel of Davide Formolo. Shackman on the attack, but I'm sure he's just going to put himself in trouble. There goes Cepeda. We need to respond. We need to be the rider reacting to Jefferson Cepeda's attacks. There goes Formolo. There goes Shackman going for the line. Can we respond at all with Hulagard? But Cepeda has slipped away at the perfect moment, and Jefferson Cepeda may even take the lead of this race. We don't get any bonus seconds today either. It's going to be a solid result, but not quite the stage I imagined at the beginning. And yes, that is going to be the case because Cepeda gets nine seconds. Perfectly timed attack. I was giving him sticks saying you don't imagine a rider like Cepeda at the Deutschland Tour. He delivers here though. Gaining that time on us in the GC. We're down to second now. By the way, what has happened to Greg Avmat? How is he getting dropped on a stage like this? Perfect for him. Penultimate stage though, and another chance definitely to try and make some differences and hopefully drop Cepeda. We are underway here then, and I did decide to try and place a rider in the breakaway. Where Stet is up the road, unfortunately, been very difficult to get any type of margin on the Pelotons so far today, but um, hopefully, if he's up the road later, we can use him as a rider to attack to a satellite rider as Rasmus Tiller, by the way, a plus five in that Norwegian jersey. We're down to four riders at the front, and the pace is on, by the way, in this race. It's been a very quick day so far. The Peloton are struggling a little. Um, I'm not quite sure who is setting the rhythm. Of course, we're excused from that by having a rider in that early breakaway, and not too many hills remaining. It's going to be difficult, I think, to drop Cepeda. So down to 30k to go west. That is about to be caught alongside Henry Ulig, I believe. GVA working on the front of this race. What has happened to that man? He's lost his mojo seemingly. We need to make sure we're staying right to the front though because the tempo is high. I do want to try and attack at least at some stage. However, 17k to go. Now down to 55 at the front. This is our chance. Now the breakaway have been caught. Let's up our guys to a very hard tempo. Really try and make an impact on this race. So Formolo is attacking right now on the flat before the climb and Cepeda is is uh, trying to follow the Italian. I'm sure Cepeda is going to struggle with that. So here we go. Rasmus Tiller ramping up the tempo. Now do I try and attack with Tiller who's on such a strong day to try and win this stage? You know what I might do? Kemner is setting such a hard rhythm though over the top of this climb. Can everyone follow? This is so difficult. And there we go. There is the moment. There goes Rasmus Tiller on a big, big attack. Searching for a 
stage win here at the Deutschland Tour. And who can follow? Who can follow? Seemingly no one is the answer because Tiller has a massive lead right now. Cepeda trying to follow. Let's just get in Gamay's wheel. Hopefully he takes us to the front of the race. But if nothing else, Tiller is two minutes down in the GC. Shackman attacking Cepeda as well. Hopefully, though, Tiller can take the stage win. So Hall of Guard is sat in. I'd love to get to Cepeda's wheel. Perhaps Jampi San is here. Trenton. Let's follow Matteo Trenton. Good sprinter, of course. We have a big lead. Big enough lead to consider our celebration right now with Rasmus Tiller. Shackman is doing his best to win this race, but Rasmus Tiller is definitely going to win the stage. Let's sprint behind. Tiller celebrates before the line. There we go. Rasmus Tiller wins solo in that Norwegian champion's jersey. Hulagard as well takes some bonus seconds, and that is huge. However, I think that Cepeda is somewhere in this group. He's just dropping off the back. He was almost done, but we weren't able to drop him. I think he'll get the same time. Let's see. Beautiful stage again here in Germany. Tiller gets the bonus seconds and Cepeda does just about cling on to the front of the race. He holds the lead. Hulagard is now five seconds behind the little Colombian. Final chance saloon then. Can we win the Deutschland Tour here in Stuttgart? So I have devised a bit of a plan. So we do have some bonus sprint points available later on in the stage and bonus seconds, I should say. Uh, three seconds for both of these sprints. If we take both of them with Marcus Ullgaard, we were uh, we win the race by a single second. Now we lost the Arctic Race of Norway in the previous episode due to Mike Woods doing us over at those intermediate sprints and those bonus seconds. Can we get one back, not on Mike Woods, but on Jefferson Cepeda today using that same tactic. We have been controlling the tempo all day. West that has been unreal, absolutely unreal. Ida Anderson as well, one minute to a breakaway of four, and hopefully we can catch them in time for those intermediates. And look at this ride by the team. What teamwork from Uno X here today. The breakaway come apart. They are caught with 29 K to go. We need to keep the rhythm high now. We've caught the breakaway because we want to deter any more attacks from taking place. 10 K to go until that first IS. Okay, so Skarsak comes to the front with Marcus on his wheel. Let's go up to 87. Maybe over the crest of this climb, I should try something with Marcus Hulagard. It's very difficult to know because 4.5k still to go until that intermediate. You know what? It's too late right now. We're going to have to stay on the front and try and go for it ourselves. So here goes Garcet attacking away, trying to get a gap on the rest of the peloton. Let's go with Hulagard. Let's go with Hulagard. Hopefully he can go and take these points right now. Hulagard going for the points. And he gets them. There we go. Perfect. It was uh, Scarset who was um, his closest rival right there. Should we continue pressing on? We may as well do. We have 25 seconds. This lead isn't going to last, but uh, we may as well try. So Scarset is going to be caught. But look at this. Shackman has attacked. Shackman has attacked. And he joins Hulagard at the front of the race. Oh my, we need to follow. We need to follow. Right, Shackman. I give you the stage if you give me the bonus seconds, please. Let's go with that, yeah? We have three attackers behind as well. And Cepeda has been left wanting. We have a minute on the pelts on here. And this is our moment. We have been using Maxi Shackman in the descent to recover. We have 1.9k to go until this intermediate. Let's go. 1.4. Let's go. Hulagard going for the win in the Deutschland Tour. Shackman doesn't respond. We have the bonus seconds we need. Let's go, guys. Oh, that's absolutely huge. And I think we can probably just sit on right now because we've got our seconds. We don't need another stage win either. And look at this gap back to Cepeda in the leader's jersey. His team aren't even pulling on the front. I guess that is how their gap has got so big to Shackman, Caruso, Van Hestel, also Formula. Let's try and respond with Ullegaard. I think due to our efforts so far today, this is going to be a step too far. Van Hestel is struggling. Shackman and Caruso going for the stage. We're giving our absolute all here. Formula as well. We're getting the Italian's wheel. He's looking a lot better than us, but Shackman has gone clear. And oh my, he is close in the GC. He is close in the GC. I've just realised, of course, we need to catch Maxi Shackman as well. And look at our energy. Have we given Maxi Shackman victory right here? Hopefully Formolo can help us out. He's going to have to because we are completely done. I'm afraid it's too late though, guys. I'm afraid that Shackman has won the Deutschland Tour. Let's try and go with Hulagard getting blocks in a little. Shackman wins the stage and we are cooked. What is the time gap? Hopefully... It's not enough for Shackman to take the win. We miss out on bonus seconds as well. I think Shackman takes it. We're on the podiums then. I can see Shackman has a 14 second gap to Caruso, Van Hestel, Hulagard 
and Formula. And I'm pretty certain that means that Maxi Shackman has won the race. Yes, he has. 10 seconds. Oh, we miss out. We stay seconds. But what can I say? We rolled the dice today and we gave it a real go. Oh, it's getting ridiculous now. It's another really near miss in the GC of a stage race. A pretty good stage race as well for a team of our level. You know, it's a big win if we win the Deutschland Tour. But Shackman, I mean, when you look at him, he's a team mobile legend. He is a beast of a rider. Difficult to stop him when he's on form, as he was right here. We give it a go. 10 seconds down. Pretty close as well. That was a really, really fun race. And we did get two stage wins as well. And so, that rounds out our objectives on the season. Another successful race here at the Deutschland Tour. Passing with absolutely flying colours. Our sponsor are absolutely delighted. And when we head to the calendar, that was our big block of racing really left this season. You can see we have the Euros, the World Champs, which I'm really looking forward to. They'll be in the next episode. Tour of Luxembourg. We may play that, may not. I'm not sure just yet. But... But yeah, that's pretty much it. One more episode of racing this season. That will leave it for today's episode though, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed. I love that race at the Deutschland Tour. If you did enjoy it, make sure you smash that like button. Drop a sub down below if you're new. We have one more final episode. Let's see if maybe, just maybe, we can win a European or a World Champions jersey with Uno X. I'll see you guys in the next one.